Hello children, this is 10th class biology digital lesson. In this lesson, we are going to learn about human respiratory system, their pathway and mechanism of respiration. Human respiratory system is the energy producing system which produces energy for our biological activities. Respiration is the pro energy producing life process that uh, uh, needs food for the production of energy. Thus, respiration leads to final utilization of food. Normally, respiration takes place in oxygen-rich environment. So, respiration needs oxygen. And cells of living body continuously needs energy. For that energy, the cells continuously utilizes food. From the food, respiration process releases energy by oxidizing the food molecules with the help of oxygen. Meaning of respiration. Respiration, the word respiration is derived from a Latin word respire. Respire meaning is breathe. So, respiration refers to the whole chain of processes from the inhalation of air to the use of oxygen in the cells. Let us see the parts of our human respiratory system. Human respiratory system contains the following parts. Nasal cavity, pharynx, larynx, trachea, lungs and diaphragm. These are the important parts present in human respiratory system. Now let us see about the events or steps in our respiration. There are no strict demarcations of events involved in the process of respiration. Why? Because respiration involves so many biochemical and physical processes. But for our general understanding, let's study the process of respiration under the following heads. Those are breathing, gases exchange at lungs level, gas transport by blood, gases exchange at tissue level and cellular respiration. Now, we will discuss about these events along with the parts of our respiratory system. The first part of our respiratory system is nose. Now we can see the parts in our respiratory system in the picture. And this is the pathway of air. Means how the air enters into the lungs. First, the air enters from the nose into the nasal cavity. From the nasal cavity, it goes through the uh, pharynx, larynx, bronchus and also lungs. So, now we are going to discuss in detail about the path of the air. First one, nostrils. The first part in the human respiratory system is nose. The openings of the nose is called as nostrils. Human respiratory system has two nostrils and air usually enters the body through the nostrils. Nasal cavity. Nostrils opens into the nasal cavity. It is a chamber starting from the nostrils to the pharynx. When the air is passing through this nasal cavity, air gets filtered. The moist surface of the lining of the nasal cavity and the hairs which are growing from the nasal cavity removes the small dust particles present in the air. And air also gets uh, adjusted to the body temperature. So, its temperature is brought close to that of the body temperature. And while passing through the nasal cavity, air also becomes more moisture than the before. So, while passing through the nasal cavity, air gets cleaned and its temperature becomes equal to the body temperature and the air gets moisturized. Next part in the respiratory system and in the path of the air is pharynx. Warming and moistening of the air continues in the pharynx region also. Pharynx is the junction for the both digestive system and respiratory system. In the pharynx, we can see an important structure, a muscular flap that is epiglottis. Epiglottis is a, regulates the movement of food and air through their respective passages. Next part is larynx. The larynx can also be called as voice box. 
This larynx is responsible for our speech. It contains vocal cords. It is a stiff box like structure. When air passes through the vocal cords, the air makes vibrate of the vocal cords. When the vocal cords vibrate, they produces the sound according to our speech and songs. Next part is trachea. When air passes from the nasal cavity and pharynx, air gets entered into the trachea. Trachea is a tube-like structure. In general, it can be called as windpipe. The, the trachea in the lower end divides into two parts, thus forming the bronchus. Trachea is made up of tough cartilage and also lined with the mucus layer. It is uh, present in the lower region of the neck. The trachea divides to form two tubes. The, those are called as bronchi. The lower end of the trachea or windpipe divides to, to, divides to, to form two bronchi, one leading to each lung. Thus, the formed bronchus further divides to form fine bronchioles which enters into the alveoli. The breathing step continues from the nose to the bronchus and to the lungs. The air from the nose enters into the nasal cavity, from the nasal cavity to the pharynx, to the larynx and to the trachea, from the trachea to the bronchus and to the bronchioles. From the bronchioles, the air enters into the sac-like structures called alveoli. These are alveoli. These are the numerous small chambers present inside the lungs. The interior of the lung is divided into millions of small chambers, thus tremendously increasing the moist surface area which is available for the gases exchange between blood and air. Because of these alveoli, the gases exchange takes place very effectively. The alveoli are very tiny structures and of course one-celled thick structures. The interior of the lung is much folded and the, the total surface of the lung is enormously increased because of these foldings. If all alveoli of lungs are spread out, they will cover an area of nearly 160 meters square which is equal to the tennis court. Let us see about gases exchange at lungs level. Gases exchange at lungs level is carried out in the part of alveoli. Alveoli are the very small structures which are present inside the lungs. These are numerous and only one cell thick. These alveoli are surrounded by blood capillaries. Those blood capillaries also one cell thick. When deoxygenated blood enters into these blood capillaries, the carbon dioxide in the deoxygenated blood leaves the blood and enters into the alveoli. The oxygen present in the alveoli will enter into the blood capillaries through the process of diffusion. And next, the blood the, carries this oxygen to the different parts of the body. This is called as gases exchange at lungs level. In the lungs, gases exchange takes place in the, process, in the place of alveoli. Here we can see the percentages of gases in the inhaled and exhaled air. If you see the oxygen percentage, oxygen percentage is only 21% in the inhaled air but it is 16.4% in the exhaled air. Means the remaining 4.6% of oxygen is utilized inside our body. In the carbon dioxide, the exhaled air is 0.03% but in the exhaled air, 4% carbon dioxide is there. The extra amount of carbon dioxide we are inhaling is produced inside our body because of different biological activities. And if you see the nitrogen percentage, nitrogen percentage is remained as it is. This means we are not utilizing nitrogen gas or we are not producing nitrogen gas. Next one, water vapor. Water vapor percentage is variable in the inhaled air. Why? Because 
द पर्सेज आफ वाटर वेपर ईज डिपेंड्स अपॉन द एनविरामेंटल कंडीशन अंड नैक्स्ट इन द एक्साल एयर द वाटर वेपर ईज साचुरेटेड दिस् मीन वेन वी आर् एक्सिंग एयर द साचुरेटेड एयर ईज रिजिंग अवट वित् वाटर वेपर नैक्स्ट कम टू द टेमपरेचर टेमपरेचर आफ् इनहाल एयर ईज वेरियबल डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द एनविरामेंटल कंडीशन मीन डिपेंडिंग अपॉन द सीजन द एयर मे बी कूल आर् मे बी हाट बट इन द एक्साल एयर आलवेज द एयर टेमपरेचर ईज क्लोज टू द बाडी टेमपरेचर डस्ट पार्टिकल दीज आर आलो वेरियबल अकॉर्ंग टू द एनविरामेंटल कंडीशन बट इन द एक्साल एयर only small tiny dust particles may be appear or may not be appear these are the percentages of gases in the inhaled and exhaled air see this is the transportation of blood transportation of oxygen in the blood if you see the blue color blood here the blue color blood means it is the deoxygenated blood when the deoxygenated blood reaches the alveoli in the capillaries the oxygen which is present in the alveoli will enters into the capillaries thus the blood becomes red in color the blood becomes red in color means it is receiving oxygen and becoming as oxygenated blood the carbon dioxide which is present in the deoxygenated blood is leaving blood capillaries and enters into the alveoli so at the site of alveoli deoxygenated blood gets oxygenated blood by receiving oxygen present in the alveoli and also and also releases carbon dioxide into the alveoli the blood carries this deoxygenated the oxygenated blood to the different parts of the body blood how blood is carrying oxygen to the different parts of our body when oxygen enters into the blood there are red blood cells these red blood cells contains a specified pigment called as hemoglobin hemoglobin can combine readily with the oxygen so when the oxygen enters from the alveoli into the blood hemoglobin combines with the oxygen forming oxyhemoglobin the oxyhemoglobin is transported throughout the body and when the oxyhemoglobin reaches the tissues level in the cells oxyhemoglobin splits and releases oxygen the released oxygen will be utilized by our cells to produce oxygen these are the equations of transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide if you see the first equation the blue color dot is hemoglobin and the pink color dot is oxygen hemoglobin combines with oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin here you can see one molecule of hemoglobin can transport four molecules of oxygen this oxygen the oxygen in the form of oxyhemoglobin is transported throughout the body and when reaches the cells the hemoglobin will release oxygen molecules and here you can see the carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide is combining with water to form hydrogen ions and also hydrogen carbonate carbonate form of hydrogen so carbon dioxide is usually transported as bicarbonates but some of the carbon dioxide may combine with the hemoglobin forming carboxy hemoglobin and some of the carbonate is dissolved in the blood plasma forming carbonates hence carbon dioxide can be transported as bicarbonates and also carboxy hemoglobin and when the carboxy hemoglobin reaches the alveoles that carbon dioxide will be released out when the oxyhemoglobin reaches the cells oxyhemoglobin releases oxygen that oxygen will be utilized in the cells this is transport this is exchange of gases in the tissue level in the tissue level oxyhemoglobin releases oxygen and takes carbon dioxide in the alveoli level our carboxyhemoglobin releases carbon dioxide and takes oxygen this is the gases exchange so we are having gases exchange at two levels 
lungs level and also at the tissues level. In the lungs level, carbon dioxide is releasing, oxygen is getting transported. In the tissues level, oxygen is releasing, carbon dioxide gets transported. See the mechanism of breathing. Mechanism of breathing tells us about inhalation and exhalation. How we are inhaling air and how we are exhaling air. First let us see this rib cage. The use of rib cage is to protect our lungs. Why? Because lungs are very delicate and spongy in nature. The delicate and spongy natured lungs are protected by our rib cage from external shocks. Along with this rib cage, our lungs, our lungs also are protected by an extra two layered membrane that is called as pleura. And uh, under this uh, rib cage, we will have a muscular structure that is called as diaphragm. You can see this diaphragm here. This diaphragm is a dome shaped structure. When diaphragm flattens, the volume of our chest cavity increases because of this increased chest cavity the internal pressure inside the lungs will be decreased so a vacuum is created in the lungs to fill that vacuum air gets entered into the lungs again when diaphragm comes, comes to its original state that means when diaphragm is in dome shaped the lungs get pressed means the volume of the chest cavity will be decreased because of the decreased cavity the internal pressure is increased because of the increased pressure the carbon dioxide which is present in the lungs gets come outside this is called as exhalation so inhalation process is carried out when diaphragm flattens and exhalation is carried out when diaphragm comes to its original place so diaphragm plays a major role in our mechanism of breathing students in this video we learnt about meaning of respiration means respiration is a biological activity which is useful to produce energy inside our body without respiration there is no energy in our body to carry out different biological activities and next parts of human respiratory system human respiratory system contains nose nose pharynx larynx trachea bronchus bronchi lungs in the lungs we are having alveoli the air enters from the nostrils and from the nostrils to nasal cavity nasal cavity to pharynx pharynx to larynx larynx to trachea to the bronchus and to the bronchioles then it enters into the alveoli in the alveoli gases exchange takes place there carbon dioxide releases out and oxygen taken up by our blood and next pathway pathway is nothing but movement of air from different parts of our respiratory system so we also discussed about pathway of air how air gets entering into our respiratory system and how we are releasing carbon dioxide outside and also we discussed about mechanism of respiration means how we are inhaling air and how we are exhaling air that comes under mechanism of respiration our diaphragm plays a major role in the in mechanism of respiration now children try to answer these following questions what is respiration write the parts of human respiratory system why lungs are divided into numerous alveoli what is the importance of epiglottis write the role of diaphragm in respiration try to answer these questions then you can learn more about the respiratory system i hope you all understand this lesson thank you